Good evening and welcome to What the Friday. I hope you've had a spectacular week. Mine has been pretty good. The kids were out of school for MLK Day on Monday and they were out again today for parent-teacher conferences, so it's been a nice easy week for the most part. It seems like this month is just getting on by, doesn't it? Now, if you recall, last year I did an episode about how it seems like January seems like the longest month of the year, but January this year is just passing on by, or at least it is to me anyway. Now, I know this is going to be a total shocker, but tonight I'm going to be talking about a serial killer. And not only am I talking about a serial killer, but this serial killer is a female, and she's from France. Her crimes took place back in the early 1900s, and I feel like she's probably one of the most heinous because her victims were children. Stick around and I'll tell you all about her. Welcome to What the Friday, an after dark series on mystery, murder, and mayhem. Listener discretion is advised. So like I said, Tonight's serial killer comes to us from France, and her name is Jean Weber. Weber was born in a small fishing village on October 7th, 1874. When she was 14 years old, she left home and made her way to Paris. And while she was there, she worked several little domestic jobs. Well, around the time she was 19, she married. And this man was a raging alcoholic. Together, they had three children by but by 1905, two of those children had died from childhood illnesses. And because of this, Jean, too, had become an alcoholic. That left her with one son named Marcel. In early March of 1905, Weber's sister-in-law needed a babysitter for her two daughters. And this is when Jean's series of bad luck got its start. While Jean was watching the two girls, the youngest child, Georgette, who had just been playing normally, got very sick, and she suddenly died. Georgette was only 18 months old, and, you know, back in those times, there was all these notorious childhood illnesses that kids didn't make it through. Well, the medical examiner didn't find anything suspicious during his examination and decided that it was just that, a childhood illness even though there were some bruises on the side of Georgette's neck. Well, two weeks later, while Georgette's family was still grieving, they found themselves needing a babysitter again for their other daughter, Suzanne, and it was Weber that they asked to watch her. Well, of course, she was just delighted, maybe even excited, to watch their little girl. She assured the parents that little Suzanne, who was two years old, would be just fine under her watchful eye. Well, everything seemed normal. Suzanne was playing, but then all of a sudden, Weber's bad luck reared its ugly head again, and Suzanne passed away. This time, the medical examiner wrote convulsions on the death certificate. Now, how horrible is it that this family is still grieving from the loss of one child, and now they're faced with the loss of another child? Well, no one in the Weber family was suspicious of Jean having anything to do with those deaths. And as a matter of fact, they were even feeling sorry for her. Yeah. She had lost two of her own children, and now within just a few weeks' time, two children who she had been babysitting had passed away. Poor Jean, they might have said. Well, two weeks after Suzanne had passed away, Jean's brother came to her and asked if she could babysit for just a couple of hours. Jean was elated, okay? She couldn't believe that she was going to watch another child. And this time she'd be watching her seven-year-old niece, Germaine. And you would think that little Germaine would be safe. Because, I mean, it was Jean's very own niece. But she wasn't safe at all. She nearly choked to death while in Jean's care. But her brother thought that she had courageously tried to save the child, and there was proof of that with red marks on her neck. Well, the next day, Jean returned to check on her niece, 
And Jean's brother thought that this was just so sweet of her to show such concern for her child. Well, while Jean was sitting with Jermaine, Jean's brother went out to do some chores around the house. And when he had left them, the little girl seemed fine. So imagine his surprise when Jean came running to him, telling him that the child had taken a turn for the worse. Well, this time, diphtheria was written on the death certificate. Not long after Jermaine had passed away with air quotes diphtheria, Jean's one remaining child, Marcel, passed away from the exact same thing. Wow, I mean, there must have been a lot of that going around. And to affect two children of the same family? And just in the month of March, four kids in the Weber family had passed away all while in the care of Jean. Now, you know the town folks had to be talking by now. Well, the next month, Jean invited two of her sisters-in-law over for a meal. And with those two sisters-in-law was one of their sons named Maurice. He was 10 years old. After the meal, the two sisters-in-law went into town to do a little shopping, and they left Maurice in the care of Jean. Well, for whatever reason, I mean, who knows, it could have been like mother's intuition, but that shopping trip got cut short, and when they returned to Jean's home, they found her standing over Maurice with her hands around his throat and a crazed look on her face. Now it all made sense. The police were called, and they wasted no time charging Jean in the murders of eight children. Two other children had also died in her care. The police theorized that Jean had killed her own son to make it look like just another unfortunate death in the family so that no one would suspect her. Well, Jean hired a defense attorney, and after the trial, the judge, jury, and even the spectators in the courtroom decided that Jean was nothing more than a grieving mother, and there was no way she could have killed any of those children, so she was acquitted. Well, after she was acquitted, she packed her stuff up and decided to move to ville du and she changed her name to Madame Moulinay. <laughs> I slaughter the French language and pretty much English too. But anyway, while she was there in Villa Du, she became employed as a babysitter. Things seemed to be going great, and that is until she called the police in to check over the child that she was in charge of there. Seems that the poor kid had came down with one of those fatal childhood illnesses that Weber was all too familiar with. This time, the medical examiner on the case wrote convulsions on the death certificate. But somehow, the authorities became aware of the fact that she was truly Jean Weber, and what she had been accused of before, she had graced their fair city. So, the medical examiner took a closer look at the case with that little boy, and once again, she found herself in court. But wouldn't you know it, the doctor said he'd check again, or he had checked again, and it was typhoid that had killed that little boy. And again, Weber was acquitted. Two times acquitted. How insane is that? Listen, I'm not going to tell you about a product unless it's something I love. And I use it on a daily basis. And what I'm about to tell you about is one of those. Over the years, I packed on quite a few pounds from having babies, stress, eating for comfort, and now as a 51-year-old woman, hormones are not on my side at all. Now, I had been seeing people on social media talking about Obvi. They were talking about how much weight they've lost and how they feel so much better. They had nothing but good things to say about it. Of course, I was skeptical, but you know what? I gave in and I gave it a try. And boy, am I glad that I did. Over the past five weeks since I started using it, I've lost 22 pounds. I haven't tried every single product that they have, but I have to say my favorite is the Collagenic Burn. Two capsules at breakfast, another two at lunch, and I have energy for the entire day. 
And it's not that jittery energy and there's no crash when it's done doing its magic. And you know, you experience that with a lot of products out there. Plus, my hair and nails are growing like crazy and my achy joints feel better each day. Your results may not be exactly the same as mine, but I encourage you to give it a try. Now, all you have to do is click the link in the episode description for my Avi, and then you can save 15% by using the promo code Mystery M. After her second acquittal, Jean just sort of drifted around and finally settled again in a town called Ogreville. Here in And there she would pick up these babysitting jobs and she also had changed her name again. And this time she changed it to Marie Lemoyne. Some of her old friends hired her to work in a children's home. These friends knew about her past, but they believed that everybody deserves a second chance. But this would actually be her third chance, having been acquitted twice already. Well, she would only be employed there for one week. Co-workers came in and found her with her hands around the neck of one of the children there. But instead of calling in the authorities, they just let Weber go on her merry way. Why, though? They knew what she had been accused of in the past. They let her work there anyway, and when she proved that she was incapable of working around children without killing them, they just sent her away. Well, after that, Jean found herself back in Paris, but she had no place to stay. And I mean, why would any of her family really want her staying with them and any children that they still might have? Well, she basically lived in the streets and she was arrested for vagrancy eventually and she was sent to a mental health facility. After serving the sentence for that charge, she was deemed sane and she was safe to be out in the public around children. But since there was no children that she could be hired to babysit, she started working as a prostitute. Not only did she have a new career, but she soon landed herself a new husband. She moved into his room that he had at an inn with him. So she was off the streets, but soon she found that the innkeeper and his wife had a 10-year-old son named Marcel. Jean was finding herself in close proximity to little Marcel often. And wouldn't you know it, her bad luck returned. This time, she would be found by the innkeeper with her hands around Marcel's neck. But she was really determined to continue with what she was doing. The innkeeper punched her uh, Jean in the face three times before she even thought about letting go of the child's lifeless body. Jean was put on trial for the third time, and wouldn't you know it, like they say, the third time's the charm. She was found to be insane and sentenced to a mental health facility again. And after she had been there for about two years, I guess not being able to kill any little kids was getting the best of her, and she succeeded at strangling herself by her own hands. And I should note here that some sources that I looked at say that she had been in that facility for 10 years before she killed herself. But either way, it was 1910 when she died. So honestly, it couldn't have been 10 years. Because if she died in 1910 and she committed most of her crimes in 1905, that wouldn't be 10 years. But anyway... I agree that she definitely had some type of mental illness, but the fact that she was tried twice and acquitted for murder charges both times, it just floors me. I can see maybe, and that's a very loose maybe, her being acquitted the first time, but not a second time. And then after she was acquitted the second time, friends who knew what she had been accused of still hired her to work around children And she claimed the life of a child after working there for just one week. And they didn't even call on the authorities when this happened. They just let her go. And now I wonder if the two children of hers that had died way on early on in in this case um, had actually died of childhood illnesses. I mean, maybe they hadn't really died of childhood illnesses. 
And another thing about all these children's deaths is that the medical examiners blamed them all on childhood illnesses. Now, I know they didn't have all the ways of testing in those days that we have now, but I would think that red marks or bruises on the neck, especially, would be a big clue that foul play was involved. Now, you know, if they would have convicted her the first time in that first trial, it's possible that I wouldn't even be talking about this tonight. And I would much rather have none of that have happened than to have a story to tell. Well, y'all, that's all I have for tonight's episode. I hope your weekend is amazing. And don't forget to come back on Monday night for an all-new episode of Mystery, Murder, and Mayhem. Good night.